Hello, everyone. This is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Um, today, I thought we would have a little bit of fun. Um, we are going to choose our picks for the breakout players of 2020. We are going to look at just the Gettleman choices, the Gettleman draft choices, who we feel are going to have the biggest impact and be be basically the biggest superheroes for the New York Giants in the 2020 season. We are first going to start with Lorenzo Carter, 6'5", 250 pounds out of Georgia, drafted two years ago. Now it will be three years ago. Um, when he played in 18, he, he only started two games. He did have four sacks, uh, 43 tackles, 30 solo, 13 assists, and uh, seven tackles for losses. Great, great first season for a rookie. He was only on the field that first season for 40% of the plays. And, he, and, and like I said, he only started two games. Now, coming into 2019, it was a little bit of a disappointment. I don't know if it was more of the scheme that because uh, he really should be playing more of the outside linebacker, but he played 65% of the snaps and, again, only had 45 tackles, 25 solo, 20 assists, and only six tackles for a loss and only four and a half sacks. So he really dropped down, and he played almost twice as much, but his impact on the field was almost non-existent. I have a feeling, under the new system, and I don't even know what the new system's going to be yet, but we have to think about this. He is more than likely we're going to be switching back to a hybrid 4-3. So he is more than likely going to fall back into an outside linebacker position, which really is his natural position. He was listed as a defensive end last year, only because of the fact that that is where we had him in the, you know, the Belcher. I call him Belcher. I know it's Betcher, but I call him Belcher, um, his system. And, you know, I really feel like, he again, he was playing out of place. So I have this feeling that if he goes back into the 4-3, is able to be a roamer on the outside edge and then potentially move to a down lineman position on third down and blitz the quarterback. You know, I would like to see us go back to the old NASCAR formation back in the uh, early, you know, back in our last two Super Bowls where we basically just had, you know, all defensive linemen lined up, no, you know, def- no defensive tackles, and we, and we just ran when they called it, you know, Spags called it NASCAR. For as simple as you played fast, you played quick, and then you, you, we were the quickest guys on the field. I think if we go back to doing something similar to that and we allow him the freedom to roam, I really think that Lorenzo Carter is going to turn the corner and become something special in 2020 for the Giants. And next on our list from Dave Gelman's Heroes of 2020, it's going to be O'Shane Zimenez, number 53 from Old Dominion. I liked him coming out of college, and I even have a Zimenez jersey. Um, when he came over to the Giants I, via the draft, I thought his skill set was going to progress well into the Betcher offense. Um, evidently, I thought wrong. Uh, he had a first, I would say his first, he had a good stretch between week two and week four when he had two sacks and about 10 tackles and a past a pass defense. I really kind of thought he was coming into his own, and then he kind of fell off the or Basically, he did. He kind of fell off the earth. Now, I'm not sure if it is coincidental or not, but his pressures and talent level seem to reemerge once we added, added Leonard Williams to the fold. Uh, as you all know, I'm not the you know I'm not the hugest Leonard William fans, but uh, Zimenez really seemed to find his presence, especially in Week 14 in the Eagle game where he had two sacks, and then he had another half a sack against Miami a week later. He found his pressure, he found his skill again. He has the talent, he has the size. He is listed as a linebacker. At 6'4", 254 in the old defense. Uh, and with Betcher gone and Patrick coming in, 
Uh, I'm really curious to see if we switch back to the 4-3, if Zimenez is really going to have a presence as the outside linebacker or, or on the edge. I'm thinking that his skill set now will, will lend itself more to the edge. The only problem with Zimenez is he's only really got one or two pass rushing moves. You know, he, he relies more on speed than the bull rush. He really needs to come with more repartee. Uh, and those are things that, you know, you know, Joe Judge talks about teaching his players. That is something that a good defensive line coach can teach. And I think Zimenez, with the right coaching, placed in the right scheme, I really think he can take off in 2020. Now, he, like I said, he had four and a half sacks, 25 tackles. You know, if he plays more, he plays in the right situations, and he's given the opportunity, I think O'Shane Zimenez can double his sack total and maybe have 40 tackles. And like I said, if he's also, it's his versatility as well. If we drop him on the edge or we put him in the outside linebacker position, I think he's fast enough that he can cover. I wouldn't want him in coverage all the time. But I really think that O'Shane is going to make a huge jump for the New York Giants in 2020. One of the other players, one of the other superheroes for 2020 is going to be Ryan Conley. Now, Ryan Conley, of course, course we know, got hurt in the Washington game. He had only played three games, uh, excuse me, four games. He started three of them. He had a combined 20 tackles, uh, one sack, two pass defenses, two interceptions. He was really, really an integral part of the Betcher system. Now, the only thing is with Conley that I worry about is that he played in the same system in Wisconsin. So when he went into play with Betcher, it wasn't like it was anything different for him. He had really been already playing in that system. But he has this knack for being around the ball. I made a comment uh, after the Tampa game, because we actually went to the Tampa game, and I made a comment after that he had seven tackles in the Tampa game, he had one pass defense and one interception. If you always looked around and near the ball, he was always there. He may not have been making the plays, and he may not have been the first one. He he wasn't what I like to refer to as someone that has pylon stats. In other words, pylon stats is you get an assist on a tackle. If you go after the play is over, you basically just jump on the pile. That's what they refer to as a pylon stat. He didn't have that. He was always in position to make the play or be a part of the play, or to change the direction of the play. And I think that's where he's going to succeed. I know the injury uh, sometimes takes a year or two to come back fully, but he's got the type of frame at 6'2", 236, that I think that he can really come back a little bit faster than other players. And I think with his intelligence and his ability to just, I think, I think, I think he will grasp any defensive system that you place him in. And like I said, for a player who has the ability to always be around the ball, I mean, I think that is what we're looking for. And again, if we fall back into a 4-3 or 4-3 hybrid and put him towards the middle linebacker position or in the middle, I mean, excuse me, the inside linebacker position and flank him with Carter or maybe uh, Isaiah Simmons, I don't know, um, and flank him, I mean, he can really just play in space play in the box and really make an impact with being able to take down the ball carry if he gets into the second level. And I'm hoping with the defensive line that we can potentially have next year, we're not going to have a lot of people getting into the second level. Hopefully he's going to be making a lot of tackles for losses. And I really think in the right system with the right coaching, he is the type of player that can do everything that we need to do. Now our last player for the superstars, the superheroes of 2020 of the New York Giants. Now, I was going to go with Daniel Jones, but I think everyone was expecting Daniel Jones because, you know, Daniel Jones is our starting quarterback. Um, He is the man. He is going to be the safety net of Eli is no longer there. So if you don't have a safety net as in the backup quarterback position, you better have a safety net in the wide receiver position. And Darius Slayton, the man, Darius, 
rookie last year out of Auburn, 6'1", 194 pounds, ran a 4.39 at the Combine. Now, those have thought that he was going to be fantastic. I mean, I didn't hear anyone the first three weeks of the season, I should say the first two weeks of the season, saying, oh, we need Darius, we need Darius. It wasn't until the Tampa game where he had three catches for 82 yards and one he had that 46-yard pass, a catch, that people started looked at him a little bit. But then he also went a couple weeks. He went, let's see, he went to what he went – one, two, three, four, five, six weeks before he really had another impact game. I mean, he did have the two touchdowns against Detroit in the loss, but he didn't. It wasn't until Week Ten against the Jets where he had ten catches for 121 yards, and the 30. He had the 39 yard touchdown catch and the two touchdowns in the loss. I mean, he showed his vertical speed. He showed his ability to get open, and he showed that I think, in my personal opinion that he could be a number one option. Now, with Golden Tate being out for as much as he was and coming back, I mean, and same with Sterling Shepard, I mean, we had to rely on Darius quite a bit. I think if we can get a complimentary receiver to him on the other side and put someone competent in the slot, I really think that Darius is going to take off. I do worry because there, there, there are a couple of players that they have that great, especially it's, and especially in the wide receiver position, they have that first great season, and then the league gets tape on them, and then year two, you know, they kind of just fall off the planet. There's a bunch of wide receivers that that that's had happened. So they have the wide receivers that had that one good year. I think that he's not going to fall into that category. And like I said, I think with a full year and a full training camp with Daniel Jones and a full year, you know, again, in the starting lineup, and hopefully we can put a compliment, you know, complimentary receivers around him. And I'm hoping that Evan Ingram comes back from his injuries and is able to stay healthy for at least 14 games of the season. But I think that if we can put everyone on the field at the same time that Darius is going to take off. I mean, I'm not saying Odell, I'm not saying Odell numbers, but I'm saying that he can make a difference. He can be that Daniel Jones guy. He could be the guy that Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones grows up with. And that's what I'm really thinking is going to happen in 2020. So those are our four superheroes, our impact players of 2020. Again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, thanks for listening.